to try and come up. I guess he is. Okay. All right, fine, thanks. Okay, sorry. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna be down by the by the roadway. It's fine. I. Let me tell you, curbside or something. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess we'll get it out of there, right? Thank you, sir. Telescope? Yep. I waited eight years for it. How long? Eight years. Really? Yeah. Well, the telescope I ordered almost eight years ago is finally here. Uh, two very large boxes. From Master Physics Illinois. I think I got on the waiting list for this in probably um, 2009. I'm not sure, it might be, could have been earlier. And I got the call that this was, uh, that I was at the top of the list in September last year and uh, for delivery in December uh, that never happened but nonetheless it's finally here delivered by freight yesterday um, so busy with work work that uh, normally I'd be all over this thing but I was so tired last night I just had to go to bed so today's the day I take it apart and uh, see what awesomeness lies within geez this freaking thing is heavy <laughs> it's bloody heavy i think it's inside a wooden box or something anyway i'm kind of three quarters of the way there well i got both boxes into the living room uh, is incredibly heavy uh, and I guess the usual guy thing if you don't have anyone to help you you carry it anyway <laughs> anyway I got it in I think we'll start by opening the smaller boxes and see what's in there I 
guess this looks like the dew shield. Oop, that's the dew shield. Uh, so felt lined. Yeah, it's really very nice. Machined aluminum. And, uh, some locking screws down there. Now uh, this is the heavier of the two smaller boxes. Oh my god. Peanuts. I hate peanuts. Let's see if we can get what's in here out without uh, getting peanuts everywhere. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is. It's flexible. Mm. I guess we'll find out. What is in here? Uh, Nondescript box. Put that aside. This is a mounting plate for the telescope. The telescope attaches to this and then this attaches to the mount. This aside. I feel like a kid is an amusement for seeing what goodies are actually in the box. And this is another mounting plate. I remember buying ordering two 16 by 5 sliding bar a speedy 16 so one for the top and one for the bottom of the ring what else is in here seems to be some more in here I think this is a user manual. It's a picture of the telescope. And some screws. Okay. I think down here. Let's see if we can do this without getting these darn peanuts up here. Uh, the telescope rings. Really very large, so it's gonna be difficult to get these out. So, oh, I found another box. <laughs> Lots of good stuff in here. So let me get these rings out of these peanuts. I think I need both hands to to do this so without getting all these peanuts all over the carpet. Okay, I managed to get the rings out. Two aluminum rings, top and bottom. Um, I got them out by tipping the peanuts into this box from the box they came in. And as you can see, there's tons of the darn things. Anyway, I think it's recycling next week. And uh, that's it for the smaller boxes. I'll put these aside. And then we can dig into the bigger box. So that's the contents of the two smaller boxes. The rings, uh, possibly a flexible cover for the telescope. A couple of smaller boxes, which I assume are the focuser. I could be wrong. Two mounting plates. 
user guide and the dew shield hmm now the dew shield has a front cover hmm maybe that's what this is anyway time to dig in here and see what's there oh and made in america which is awesome speaking of someone who's actually a brit that is a good thing to see This is going to need two hands, so bear with me while I get this out of the box and I'll come back. Well, I got it out of the box. It's two steps, cut the outer box off, take the foam off and then lift it out of the box. As you can tell, I'm kind of out of breath. <laughs> very nice box it's really nice I don't have to make this myself let's see what's inside oh, trust me it is very heavy beautiful I'm sorry I have to look at the box first before I even look at the telescope that is fantastic the material is just wonderful and here's the telescope I think it weighs about uh, 50 pounds and it has these straps to lift it out of the uh, case. Um, I unbelievably uh, don't really want to take it out of its box right now until I am uh, ready to put it in the observatory. But I think curiosity is going to get the better of me. But I'm higher up. That's what it looks like. Great piece of American engineering by a great company. And optics by a really fantastic optician. I think I'll take it out of the box and so we can have a look at it. Okay, uh, these are the rings, telescope rings. This is an adapter that screws into the uh, back of the telescope and adapts for different diameter um, cameras. 
that red thing comes off and then you can have a camera with a one and a quarter inch nose piece and you take it out and turn it here. I have something like this on on my other telescope. So it's a useful thing to have. Uh, these the plates are not that interesting really. They attach to the rings front and back and to the top as well and then the telescope just slides down the middle and then these are wheels for this incredibly heavy carrying case uh, this is the dew shield And there's this flexible rubbery material which um, I'm still not 100% sure what it's for. Um, I'm sure when I read the user manual I'll figure it out. Uh, maybe it goes around the dew shield to maintain the temperature, I'm, I'm not sure. But again really beautiful engineering all around okay i've gotten the telescope out of the case as you can see it has a pretty large focuser it's 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 just absolutely a delight to use <sighs> unless you're actually here turning this and seeing how this focuser operates it's kind of hard to describe so that's the course adjustment and then this gold guy here, this um, bronze guy here, and that's the fine adjustment. And then you can use this knob here to lock the focuser in place so it doesn't turn and uh, doesn't move around on you as the telescope points to different places in the sky. And then <coughs> is where the adapters fit. Just look down through there. And uh, the reason for this telescope is it has a very large, very, very large imaging plane, if you want to call it that. Um, um, there are actually very, very few CCD cameras available today that can actually, you know, make use of this aperture. But uh, some of you who know me will actually know what my plan is for that. But we'll come to that shortly. And there's the uh, focus and manufacturer for the touch made for Astrophysics Incorporated. Nice partnership there. So, some nice carrying handles and I believe you can take these off to open the back plate to get the telescope to cool down faster. And this is the front reveal. I actually got more light so we can see what this looks like. Right 
Let you cover. Let's see if we can get this off. It's a very, very close fit. Ooh, we still have one. on this astrograph astrophysics USA f3.8 it's hard to see this is 305 millimeters there you go the astrophysics logo so it's gonna be a while before I put this in the observatory but uh, it's here and I'm kind of happy and I guess the next step is the reveal of what my next plans are okay so we were talking about um, the image circle produced by this telescope is, I think it's about 70 millimeters. Um, um, a typical 35 millimeter um, CCD camera, they're, they're kind of pretty darn expensive. And this will very, very, very easily illuminate a CCD camera of that type. Um, but I decided to go one further. So I have uh, this Spectral Instruments 800S CCD camera. This has a uh, 61 millimeter square CCD sensor, 4K by 4K. Um, this camera weighs about 18 pounds so it's actually very heavy um, it's too heavy for this focuser I believe so uh, one of my tasks is going to be to swap this out with an electronic focuser that uh, can carry that weight and uh, machine an adapter to meet the yet to be purchased focuser to the front plate of this camera. Um, this is just a uh, this is just a um, a frame from the machine that I salvaged this camera from. So this frame is going to go away, and so will this front bezel here. Um, I'm not sure what the final layout will look like, but uh, that's the plan. And um, I will show you the front CCD of one of these cameras so you get an idea of uh, how big it is. Uh, let me get a couple of calipers or, and uh, I'll show you. Okay, rather than use a pair of calipers, I'll just show you with a good old ruler. So as you can see, the clear aperture coming out of the back this telescope is uh, almost 70 millimeters. Let's take this off. Yep. Just, uh, just a hair under 70 millimeters. And that's a flat field based on uh, the optics in there. And I will show you the um, the CCD 
in this camera. So here we have the uh, absolutely enormous CCD and the Spectral Instruments camera. Um, it is actually square, so I'm just going to measure one dimension. And if we can get this thing to display properly, I'll do it from the bottom. With our parallax error, it is actually... Oh, this is actually very hard to do. I'm sure you correctly. It is it's about 60, 61, mil, 61 millimeters. 61 millimeters square. So that's 4K by 4K, 61 millimeters square. So the pixels in this are about 15 microns on the side. So my task is to meet this guy to the telescope. So quite a bit of work ahead of me. And I think this is the longest video I've ever posted. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll keep you up to date with my progress. Don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm sure it'll be fun getting there. Okay, take care. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.